Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's great to see you all here this morning. I'm very thankful for this opportunity to come out here and, and speak to you all this morning. Uh, it's been a wild, wild week, uh, wild time trying to get on that plane. I barely made it by the skin of my teeth, but but I made it. So, uh, so like I said, the uh, or like uh, Mr. Kenny said, the lesson is called Keep Moving Forward. Now, uh, by a show of hands, how many of you have seen the Rocky movie? Yeah? Okay. Confession, when I made this lesson, I've never seen the movie. Never seen the movie at all. Uh, I was on the internet and I was searching for quotes, inspirational quotes, and that happened to be the first one that popped up. And so I put it in my lesson, and when I went to preach this at uh, North Carolina, uh, the guy about got out of his seat and said, you need to go watch Rocky. And so, <laughs> and so I did. But the quote, the quote from this movie is, nobody's going to hit as hard as life. But it isn't how hard you can take a hit, it's how hard you can take a hit and keep moving forward. It's how much you can take and keep moving forward. Now this morning I'm going to have, have two things I'm going to show you. The first thing is going to, is I'm going to show you is that uh, various men who went through various obstacles in their life. And then next I'm going to show you how each man was able to overcome that obstacle and keep moving forward. So the first man that we're going to look at is Job. So if you would, turn your Bibles to Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1, and we'll be reading verses 1 through 5. And if you want, it'll be on the overhead, but I don't know how well you can see that up there. So Job chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job. And that man was blameless and upright, one who feared God and turned away from evil. There were born to him seven sons and three daughters. He possessed 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 female donkeys, and, a very, and, a very, excuse me, and very many servants, so that this man was the greatest of all people of the East. His sons uh, used to go and hold, hold a feast in the house of each, each one on his day, and they would send and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And when the days of the feast had run their course, Job would send a and consecrate them. And he would rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my children have sinned and, and cursed God in their hearts. Thus Job did continually. We see here that Job, Job had a great life. He had a lot of animals. He had a lot of servants. He had ten children. He had a, he had a wife. His life was great. Well, let's keep going in this chapter, uh, skip it down to verse 13. Verse 13. Now there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And there came a messenger to Job and said, The oxen were plowing, the donkeys feeding beside them. And the sevens fell upon them and took them and struck, the, and struck down the servants with the edge of the sword. And I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, The fire of God fell from heaven and burned up all the sheep and the servants and consumed them all, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, yet another came and said, The Chaldeans formed three groups and made a raid on the, on the camels and took them and struck them down, and the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, yet another came and said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house, and behold, a great wind came across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young people, and they are dead, and I alone have escaped to tell you. Then Job rose, tore his robe, and shaved his head, and fell to the ground and worshipped. And he said, Naked I come from my mother's womb, and naked I shall return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this Job did not sin, nor charge God with any wrong. Also skip to the next chapter, Job chapter 2, verses 7 through 8. Job chapter 2, verses 7 through 8. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and struck Job with loathsome swords and the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. And he took, and he took a piece of broken pottery uh, with which to scrape himself while he was in ashes. Sat in the ashes. We see Job face an obstacle here in his life. His life was good, he was living a great life, and all of a sudden, he lost everything. 
He lost his house, he lost his animals, he had swords from the bottom of his feet to the top of his head. We as Christians need to, and as people, as humans on this earth, need to understand that we can go through life, and it can be great, and it can be fantastic, and then all of a sudden we're hit with something unexpected. We're hit with something that we don't understand. How do you deal with that obstacle? And later we're going to see how Job was able to, to deal with that obstacle. The next man we're going to look at is, is David. Now David was a man after God's own heart the youngest of his brothers to be anointed king. Before he acquired the, the chance to sit in the throne, uh, he was a man that the people admired. He defeated Goliath, he won many wars with the Philistines, and gained a lot of love from the people. Well, not all of them. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 18. 1 Samuel chapter 18, verses 6 through 11. 1 Samuel chapter 18, verses 6 through 11. And as they were coming home, when David returned from striking down the Philistine, the woman came out of this, all the cities of Israel singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tambourines, with songs of joy, with musical instruments. And the woman sang to one another as they celebrated, Saul has struck his thousands and David his ten thousands. And Saul was very angry. And this saying displeased him. He said, they have ascribed to David ten thousands and to me, they have ascribed thousands. And what more can he have but the kingdom? And Saul eyed David from that day on. The next day a harmful spirit from God rushed upon Saul, and he raved within his house while David was playing the lyre, as he did day by day. Saul had a spear in his hand, and Saul hurled the spear, for he thought, I will pin David to the wall. But David evaded him twice. David's obstacle was trying not to die during King Saul's reign. He was constantly and constantly being chased by King Saul because Saul, King Saul grew jealous and jealous of David and the love and attention that David was receiving. Sometimes we as people and, and we as humans in our own life are, are going to have people who are going to be constantly jealous of us, of our success, of that we're liked very much, and all these different things. Another obstacle David had to face is when he committed that sin with Bathsheba. Look at 2 Samuel chapter 11, verses 2 through 5. 2 Samuel chapter 11, verses 2 through 5. This is the only scripture I don't have up here on the overhead. 2 Samuel chapter 11, verses 2 through 5. It happened late one afternoon when David arose from his, his couch and was walking on the roof of the king's house. And he saw from the roof a woman bathing and a woman that was very beautiful. And David sent and inquired about the woman and one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Elam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? So David sent messengers and took her and she came and lay with and he lay with her. Now she had been purifying herself from her uncleanliness. Then she returned to her house and the woman conceived and she sent and told David, I am pregnant. What interests me about this scenario is that when, when David saw Bathsheba, he saw her on the roof, he went and inquired about her. Who is that woman? And, and the servant comes back and he says, oh, that Bathsheba, that's Uriah the Hittite's wife. Already knowing that that is someone else's wife, he still wanted to continue with that sin. And so he sent the messenger to go and, and retrieve Bathsheba, and Bathsheba came and he laid with her. And the consequence of that is she, she became pregnant. And so now David has a choice. David could confess to Uriah and say, hey, hey man, I did a horrible thing. I went and I, and I, and I committed adultery with your wife, and, and she is carrying my child. I'm so sorry. That's the story we remember, right? He went and, and confessed to Uriah. No, that's not the story. Look over in uh, 2 Samuel chapter 11, verses 22 through 25. 2 Samuel chapter 11, verses 22 through 25. So the messenger went and came and told David all that Joab had sent to him. The messenger said to David, the men, 
the men gained an advantage over us and came out against us in the field, but we drove them back to the entrance of the gate. Then the archer shot at your servants from the wall. Some, some of the king's servants are dead, and your servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. David said to the messenger, Thus shall you say to Job, Do not let this matter displease you, for the sword devours now one and now another. Strengthen your attack against the city and overthrow it and encourage it. So instead of confessing about what he did, David decides to cover it up. Now before David kills Uriah, he tries to bring back Uriah and send him over to his wife. He says, you know, uh, send Uriah here. And Uriah comes and says, you know what? You've been at war. Go home to your wife. But Uriah never went to his wife. And so the next day, he decides to get Uriah drunk and send him over to his wife. But in the words of Ryan Hasty, he says, uh, Uriah was better drunk than David sober. Uriah was better drunk than David sober. Uriah still did not go and lay with his wife. So David grew tired and weary of this. He said, you know what? Let's just, let's just, kill, let's just kill him and get him out the way. And so he writes a letter to, to, uh, to Joab and uh, and he says, here, uh, I, just, I just want you to go and just, just kill him. Just kill uh, Uriah. And so Joab, being a, a faithful servant to the king, did as he was told. If, you have not, if any of you have seen the movie God's Not Dead, you, you, know, you know this quote. Sometimes the devil allows people to live a life free of trouble because he doesn't want, uh, want them turning to God. Their sin is like a jail cell, except it's all nice and comfy, and there doesn't seem to be any reason to leave. The door is wide open, until one day time runs out, and the cell door slams shut, and suddenly it's too late. Sometimes as Christians, as new Christians, as Christians who have fallen away, we give in to sin. We give in to that temptation, and we like it. Because it's comfortable. Because it feels good. And then suddenly that door shuts. That opportunity to leave shuts. David fell right into that trap. That sin. And he had the chance to confess. He had the chance to go and repent of his sins. And he didn't. He decided to cover it up. But later we'll see how David was able to overcome that obstacle. The next man we're going to look at is, is Joseph. Now, Joseph was his father's favorite son. He received gifts and praise from his father, but his brothers did not feel the same way. Let's look at Genesis chapter 37. Genesis chapter 37 and verses 18 to 24. Genesis chapter 37, verses 18 to 24. They saw him from afar and before, and, excuse me, they saw him from afar and before he came near to them, they conspired against him to kill him. And they said to one another, here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into the into one of the pits. Then he will say that a fierce an then we'll say that a fierce animal has devoured him. And we will see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he rescued him out of their hands, saying, Let us not take his life. And Reuben said to them, Shed no blood Throw him into the pit there in the wilderness, but do not lay a hand on him. That he, might rest, that he might rescue him out of their hands to restore him to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe and the robe of many colors that he wore. Excuse me. And they took him and threw him into a pit. And the pit was, was empty and there was no water in it. Joseph's brothers then sold, uh, sold him into slavery and lied to his father just to get him out of their sight. Joseph had to face so many obstacles during his life in Egypt and eventually had to go over the obstacle and forgive his brothers for what they had done. As humans, we're going to constantly have people who are going to lie to us, to deceive us, and maybe even to harm us, to either get something done that they want or just because they just plain out just don't like you. <coughs> we are going to have obstacles, things that we have to overcome and keep moving forward. The next 
group of people we're going to look at is, is the Israelites. Now the Israelites faced many, many obstacles, from building idols to complaining after being freed from slavery, and of course, being enslaved. Look at Exodus chapter 6. Exodus chapter 6 and verse 6. Say therefore to the people of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the brothers, excuse me, the burdens of Egyptians, and I will deliver you from slavery to them. And I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with a great act of judgment. Exodus chapter 32. Exodus chapter 32, verses 2 through 10. Exodus chapter 32, verses 2 through 10. So Aaron said to them, Take off the rings of gold that are in the ears of your wives and sons and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the rings of gold that were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received the gold from their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool and made a golden calf. And they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before, and Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early the next day and offered a burnt offering and, and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. And the Lord said to Moses, Go down, for your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of, out of the way that I commanded them. They have made themselves a golden calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore let me alone that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, in order that I may, I may make a great nation out of you. And then look at Exodus 16, verse 8. Exodus 16, and verse 8. And Moses said, When the Lord gives you in the evening meat to eat, and in the morning bread to be full, because the Lord has heard your grumbling, that you grumble against him, what are we? Your grumbling is not against us, but against the Lord. The Israelites have complained about everything, set idols in front of them to distract them from what's important. As Christians, aren't we always complaining? As humans, aren't we always complaining? My house is too small. I get paid too little. My car isn't as cool as that guy's over there. Constantly and constantly complaining. Distractions. Idols that we set before God. Things that we put as first priority. Later we'll be able to see how, those, how the Israelites were able to overcome that. The next person is Samson. Now, as we've seen in, in past examples, we've seen very few obstacles that were presented were because of a person. Samson's ob obstacle was not an object, but a person. Look at Judges chapter 15, 16, excuse me. Judges chapter 16, verses 15 through 20. Judges chapter 16, verses 15 through 20. And he said, and she said to him, How can you say I love you? When your heart is not with me. You have mocked me these three times. And you have not told me where your great strength lies. And when, she, and when she pressed him hard with her words day after day. And urged him and his soul was vexed to death. And he told her all his heart. And said to her. A razor has never come upon my head. For I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. If my head is shaved then my strength will leave me. And I shall become weak be like any other man. When Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she had sent and called the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up again, for he has told me with all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up to her and brought the money in, in their hands, and she made him sleep on her knees, and she called a man and, sh and had him shave off the seven locks of his head. Then she began to torment him and his strength and left him. And she said, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. And he awoke from his sleep and said, I will go out as other times and shake, shake myself free. But did not know that the Lord had left him. Delilah was Samson's obstacle. 
When Samson would lie to her, she'd come back to him and say, I thought you loved me, Samson. I thought you loved me. Why won't you tell me your secret? And so he'll tell her again, which is another lie, and, and she'll believe it, and she'll do it. And it just it's over and over again. And so finally, she's like, if you love me, you would tell me your secret. And so Samson gives in and, and tells the secret of the strength. We're going to have different type of people in our lives who are going to come in and they're going to be that distraction. They're going to be that obstacle. We have to be careful when we let certain people in our lives because they could, they could be the ones to trap us in that sin. They could be the ones to lead you astray. I don't remember where I heard this from uh, or who I heard this from, but I'm sure all of you know who Kobe Bryant is, of course. Um, he went and spoke to uh, the Alabama football team, and I know, I know that's a touchy subject here, but just bear with me. He went, he went and talked to the Alabama football team, and uh, and he and he told them a story, and he was talking about editing your life, editing the things that you don't need in your life. If people are in your life who are leading you to sin, and who are peer pressuring you to do things that are not according to God's will, edit them out of your life. Samson eventually edited those out of his life, but we'll see that a little bit later. The last person we're going to look at this morning is Paul. Now, Paul was a great man, a zealous man for God, but during his time serving the Lord, he had to face many obstacles. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 21 through 27. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 21 to 27. To my shame, I must say, we were too weak for that. But whatever anyone else dares to boast of, I am speaking as a fool. I also dare to boast of that. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they offspring of Abraham? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? I am a better one. I am talking like a madman. With far greater labors, far more imprisonments, with countless beatings, often near death, five times I received at the hand of the Jews, forty lashes less one, three times I was beaten with rods, once I was stoned, three times I was shipwrecked, a night and day I was adrift at sea, one frequent, excuse me, on frequent journeys in danger from rivers, danger from robbers, danger from my own people, <coughs> danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers, and toil and hardship through many a sleepless night, and hunger and thirst, often without food, and cold exposure. Paul suffered beatings and imprisonment and many other obstacles that he had to face during his time, during his teaching, and still kept moving forward. He still kept his eye on his goal that was set in front of him. We as Christians are going to face some type of persecution because we're Christians. We're, we're going to have things in our life that are going to prevent us from doing our job. We're going to have things that are going to try to stop us from doing what God has commanded us to do. And we'll see later how Paul was able to, to keep moving forward in the lesson. But now I want to flip the tables. Now I want to see how each man was able to overcome each obstacle. Now Job. Job lost everything. Like I said, he lost his animals, his servants, his money, his children, had sores from the bottom of his feet to the top of his head. But notice in Job chapter 1 and verse 22, in all this Job did not sin nor charge God with wrong. Job never blamed God for his obstacle that he faced. Instead, he kept moving forward. Instead, he kept pursuing God. We as Christians are born, and as humans are going to suffer loss. We're going to suffer loss. Uh, there, there, there's a story I do, I do have to tell where uh, about maybe maybe five years ago, I don't know, it was the time I was, I was living in Colorado. Um, one of my uncles was actually, was actually murdered in, uh, in Raleigh, North Carolina. He was driving down the down the street and someone was chasing him right behind him. I don't know if he knew that he was chasing him, but he shot him through the back of the window and the back of the head. <coughs> and so it was very hard when I went home and saw my mom because uh, 
she was against the wall. It was her brother, and, and she was against the wall, and she was crying, and, and uh, it was very hard for me to to see her like that. And um, I was always thinking to myself, you know, why would someone do that? Why would someone just go and kill someone on purpose? We all suffer loss. And you can blame God. You can say, why did you let this happen to me, God? I did nothing wrong and you're punishing me. Or you can say, God, I believe you. I know you have a plan. And this is just a part of life. But I know that your son, excuse me, I know that through your son, there is a better life. And that you have that plan. The application that I want you to take away from Job is that everyone suffers loss. Or we encounter things that we don't understand. But we have to keep moving forward and not let this thing drag you down and lose your faith. The next person is David. Now David was constantly being chased by King Saul. Because King Saul grew jealous of David. Because of the love and the chance and the glory that David was receiving from the people. And from God. David had to keep moving forward through this obstacle. And we see this in the book of Psalms where he was constantly praising God. Also, you can take a look at 1 Samuel when David was being chased and Jonathan had to help David hide from his father. And he hid him in the cave and, and David was hiding and, and David cut off a piece of Saul's rope. And he cut it off and he felt guilty and knew that it wasn't right to cut off the rope of the Lord's anointing. David could have took that easy way out. David could have killed Saul right then and there in that cave. But as we see in uh, 1 Samuel, that, that's not what happened. As Christians, as human beings, we're going to have people who are constantly going to be jealous of us. Just because we're liked by other people. Just because you're good at a sport. Just because you're good at something that they're not. And they're going to want to harm you. They're going to want to tear you down. They're going to want to make sure that you feel so small. Be like David and keep moving forward. Ignore everything and keep your focus on that goal and your path towards God. When David faced this, uh, this sin with Bathsheba and tried to cover it up, Nathan came and confronted David and told him the story. And David was furious with the story and said that the man should be put to death uh, because of what he did. And Nathan says, you're that man, David. You're that man. And at that moment, David realized that he was that man and that he sinned against God. He said, forgive me, I have sinned against the Lord. And he repented and confessed of his sins and kept moving forward towards God. An application you can take from David is that people are going to want to wear you down. Could be your girlfriend or boyfriend. Could be your sister, your best friend, co-worker. Could be anyone. Don't let anyone tear you down and make you feel that you can't accomplish anything. Keep moving forward. You're going to face this obstacle, and you need to keep moving forward. Joseph's obstacle is just like David's, except it's betrayal, lies, and deceit. His brothers, like King Saul, were jealous of Joseph because of the love and favoritism that Joseph had, excuse me, Joseph's dad bestowed upon Joseph. They discussed a plot against Joseph to get rid of him, and they wanted to kill him. But they decided to beat him up and put him in a, in a pit and sell him to slavery. As luck would have it, the brothers encountered Joseph a few years later, and now Joseph had this obstacle set in front of him. He had to forgive his brothers for what they did. Just like I had to forgive that man that murdered my uncle, Joseph had to do the same thing. Of course, Joseph was able to forgive his brothers and move on with his life. And he spent time with them and was genuinely happy to see his brothers. Forgiveness is hard. Especially if someone is constantly and constantly sinning against you. And they ask for forgiveness and they do it over and over again. And you're like, you know what, this is the last time I'm not going to forgive you again. How is God going to see? We must forgive each other just as God has forgiven us. We must love each other just as God has loved us. Do you think that you deserve God's forgiveness? <coughs> Do you think that you deserve God's grace and God's mercy every day? Do you, Do you think you deserve to wake up every single morning? Do you think that you deserve it? 
We don't. We're all sinners and we all fall short of the glory of God. But because of God's grace and God's mercy and because of his love, we are able to do it. An application you can take from Joseph is that forgiveness is a hard thing. Especially if you don't have the willingness to forgive. But like Joseph, you have to forgive so that God can forgive you. Don't hold that brush. Move, move forward, forgive, and keep moving forward. <coughs> now the Israelites had to face many, many obstacles during their lifetime. They battled with complaining and worshiping idols. And all these other sinful things that they were doing against God's word. And you look back when the Israelites were saved from slavery. They walked through the, the part of Red Sea. They seen all these wonderful miracles that God did. Sending those ten plagues uh, upon the Egyptians. And they complained every step of the way. Making their three day journey into a 40 year journey. Excuse me, 40 day journey. Because they could not stop complaining about what they were going to eat. And all these unimportant things earthly things. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai after receiving the Ten Commandments, he, he observed the Israelites worshiping a golden calf. And God was fierce with the sinful thing and the Israelites had done, and he wanted to wipe them off of the face of the earth. But of course, Moses interceded for them. As Christians, we are constantly going to get hit with this obstacle where it distracts us from the truth. Or we are worried about the worldly possessions. Don't. Put your, put your focus on God and not on the things of this world. There is a quote that actually helped me through, uh, through some difficult times. And, and, and the quote says, do not focus on the things that you don't have because you forget about the things that you do. Don't forget about the things that you don't have because you will forget about the things that you do. Put your focus on God. Samson. Now, Samson had an obstacle that we consider a blind side. Samson was so in love with Delilah that he gave the secret away when God had forbidden him to tell that secret. And once Delilah knew the secret, she deceived Samson and went behind his back. She shaved off his head, taking away his strength, calling the guards to arrest him, and all of this just for money. Samson knew he sinned and he repented of his sins and when he was chained against two columns, he not only broke it and killed the Philistines, but he also broke it and killed himself in the process. We're going to have friends or even a loved one who is determined to deceive you because either they don't like you, because they're, they're getting something in return. We have to protect ourselves and keep, and keep guard because there are people out there who want to use you and get the things that they want. They don't care about you. They want what they want. The application you can take and receive from Samson is that we are going to face an obstacle where you might truly love someone. You might truly love someone. You might truly care about someone. But you're blinded that they are just using you for their own personal gain. We all fall short of the glory of God and we all sin. But just like Samson, we need to repent of our sins and keep moving forward on the path towards God. And the last person we're going to observe is Paul, of course. Now, Paul is a zealous man. A man who strived to always pursue and teach God's word. He always strived to do God's will, but during his missionary, he faced many obstacles. He was beaten, he was stoned, he was whipped, mocked, imprisoned, shipwrecked, and many, many more things. Paul was physically beaten for teaching about God, for preaching about the truth. And he continued to preach through the pain and suffering. We as Christians are going to face many obstacles that come from, that come in form of persecution. We're going to have people who want us to stop believing in the things that we believe, to stop the preaching and stop the teaching and telling them that they're sinning, to just sit there and be quiet. Paul suffered all these persecutions and kept moving forward. There is, there is a song lyric I was listening to the other day, and it says, anyone can take your life, but not what you believe in. The application you can take from Paul is that no matter how much persecution you face, no matter how many times people put you down, tear you apart, threaten your life, you stay true to what you believe. You stay true to believing that truth. Stay true, stay faithful, and keep moving forward. So in conclusion, 
First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to men. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure. We are going to face many obstacles in our life, just like these men did during their lifetime. But God will never give you too much to handle. He will never put you in a position where you can't handle or you can't overcome. I remember uh, this was during the time I was living in Niceville, actually, Niceville, Niceville Florida, during this, in the Destin area. During this time, I, I was doing wrestling. Uh, I was doing wrestling for, for uh, the, the city. Uh, I guess you could say, and uh, I, I was in this tournament, and I've already done two matches, and so I was extremely tired, and I didn't want to go on with that third match. I was extremely tired of the, of the two, and so this is why I love my parents so much. They pulled me aside, and right here, my dad put his arms on my shoulders, and this is what he said to me. He said, Brian, if you win, to, if you win today, I will buy you a cinnamon. And so I had the I had the determination and the and the and the motivation to keep going and to push it. I eventually ended up crying because I did not win and get that cinnamon roll. But the point the point of this the point the point of this is that it all comes down to your determination and your endurance and your choice to overcome that obstacle. That choice is up to you whether you give up or you have that choice to keep moving forward. Where you give up because that obstacle is too hard. It's too hard and you can't get past that obstacle. You say it's too much. I just want to lay here and just let nothing happen to me. Or you have that choice to get up and move past that obstacle and get it out of the way, get it out of your sight and keep moving forward. That choice is up to you. This morning, if you are not a Christian and you face some type of obstacle in your life, and you want to overcome it, that first step this morning is to be baptized when that water is ready for you. But if you are a Christian and you face some type of obstacle in your life and you're having trouble to keep moving forward, you have the opportunity now to come forward and repent or, or ask prayers from the congregation. Please come forward now as you stand and sing.